Tooth Welcome tooth back. <laughs> Max Cryer joins me now. <laughs> so, Max, I mean, I always say, well, this is a popular saying, you can't judge a book by its cover, but I always think that you can judge a book by its author. And um, you have written some fabulous books about the English language because you have a real love of it, don't you? I do, yes. When I look back on the sort of bizarre thing known as my career, almost all of it has been somehow anchored to the English language, though I never knew it at the time. I mean, it's just emerged when people like you say it. <laughs> yeah, that's but, just But, you know, I, well, I produced Mastermind on television for 10 years, and that's all words. Mm. And I, I've toured America as an entertainer 19 times, but doing Noel Coward and Gilbert and Sullivan, you know, Cole wow. Porter, word-orientated things. And now I've been on radio in New Zealand for 15 years, I'm on Radio Live, mm. answering questions about English language. So it's not just me who's hooked on the language, the questions come every week. Every, there are a lot of other people hooked on it as well. It's brilliant, isn't it? Was it something that you thought of when you were growing up as a young boy that you ever thought like, did you have, were you talented at English at school? Not really. I don't think many young boys growing no, up. I, don't think <laughs> I had other things on my mind. <laughs> no, it's come lately, but it's very satisfying and, and I, I'm lucky because some of the ideas Years I've had like that one um, have come to fruition so it's you know holding in your hand holding something two years of your life mm. and I'm very grateful that I have that opportunity. It is a fabulous book it's called Who Said That First and it's the curious origins of common words and phrases and we I mean looking through it you, we know just about every single one of them and we find we use them on a day-to-day -day well, basis. The, as I mentioned a minute ago I've been answering radio questions for years on Radio Live and I thought this time I'll move towards people. Mm. And um, you might have heard the story that it was actually Lucille Ball who started it all off. Mm. She, uh, when I worked in Hollywood, I knew her slightly and we were having lunch one day. She nice? Oh, she was very quiet and well-spoken and dignified. She was nothing at all like that mad woman on the screen. <laughs> but, Goodness. but I congratulated her because she just won a big award or something. And she said, look, I would be nothing without the writers. Mm. Without the writers, I am nothing. It is all because of the writers. And it really impressed me that a woman of her standing, um, you know, most famous stars are only too willing to take the credit. I know. <laughs> she <laughs> said, no, she said, without them I'd be nothing. Of course, she had the talent to deliver the funny line, but it was the blokes writing the script that she gave credit to, and that always impressed me, and it stuck in my mind. And then I went to see uh, Crocodile Dundee, mm. and you know, they, the thug came to him in the street of New York with a dagger, and Crocodile said, you call that a knife? That's a knife. Yeah. And he had this great big... Well, he wrote that line, but in a quote book, I found another one from a Dirty Harry movie where Clint Eastwood, threatened with a pistol, said, go ahead, make my day. And I thought, did Clint Eastwood stop filming and say, I've just thought of a good line to say, or did someone write it for him? And of course, someone did. Only no one ever credits Joseph Stinson, who actually wrote the line. Wow. If you look up a book of quotes, it says, go ahead, make my day, Clint Eastwood. Mm. Not really true. Mm. No, not <laughs> so at all. So I sort of went to battle <laughs> and I sorted out who actually writers. said who actually said all those things. So an incredible amount of research on that note, Max, must be you know taken for a book like this. Yes, and fortunately the the publishers said to me, you know, if possible, we do like surprises. What they meant was, don't make it boring. <laughs> well, I didn't really have to try to surprise because I had so many. For instance, Superman. You know, we've all heard of Superman. Who invented the word? George Bernard Shaw. 1905. That's where the word Superman comes from. That's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? That is it? a surprise. And then I located... I. I'll take a bet, you don't know who Edward Spencer Ford was. No. no. <laughs> Nobody does. And yet he created, he caused one of the most famous phrases of the last few years. The Queen appeared on television with her glasses on, her jewels and her speech, and she said, this year has been an annus horribilis. Mm -hmm. Everybody in the world heard it. It was on every front page of every newspaper. Guess what? Television and radio had cut off the first half of the sentence. What she actually said was, in the words of one of my more sympathetic correspondents, 
Interesting. This has been an Annas for Frivolous. So, of course, I wrote to Buckingham Palace and said, who was the correspondent? And mm -hmm. they were very helpful. And he was Edward Spencer Ford. So he wrote know. the letter. So that, that was a pleasant surprise. <laughs> <laughs> so you obviously just have a natural fascination of finding out these things and letting us know about it's them. It's grown, I think. Um, I, I don't want to bore people with too many details, but there, there have been surprises that I've found in the book that really, for instance, I just said Edward Spencer Ford, you've never heard of him, mm. and you've never heard, I doubt, of Lady Nudigate. <laughs> no, but no. nice name. <laughs> well, Lady Nudigate was in 1790. She, her husband was away on a trip, uh, and it was on his birthday, and she, she wrote a line which everybody in the English-speaking world says many, many times. She wrote to him and said, we have come from church after praying for you on your birthday, and we look forward to your, to, to your being home and for many happy returns of this day. And guess what? Go. Everybody says many happy returns and no one ever says thank you, Lady Judy Gage. That's exactly right. In fact, I've written that in a birthday card today. So yes. there you go. Yes, and curiously, the meaning has become mm. a little cloudy. What she meant was that this day will return mm. and that you'll be with me when this day returns, your birthday next year and the year after. Wonderful. It's a charming phrase. It is a charming phrase and it's really nice to be able to remember those kinds of things, which is why we need the book. <laughs> because of course we, we talk about them and then we hear them and then we go to tell someone else. I'll tell forget. you something, a radio interviewer who shall remain nameless was talking to me about it the other day on air and, and he said, as a matter of fact, I keep it in the loo. It's good to read just a bit in the piece now and then. I was actually quite pleased. <laughs> well, Max, it's been a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. And good luck with this book. It's fantastic. Check it out. See you tomorrow.